cloudy world and with this recent news about clay thompson now signing that new deal with the mavericks it's about time we had that conversation about what is draymond green and what does his presence have and represent for the warriors many people have felt like draymond green's constant outbursts his issues with jordan Poole, his constant issues with kd and him just having a stronger a little bit more ruthless presence has kind of slowly but surely led to the downfall of the golden state warriors now we're here to break down the truth and figure out is draymond green just some loud mouth that just doesn't know how to just stop talking or has he secretly been one of the most impactful important pieces to golden state's dynasty and their dominance when we talk about a lot of things in coming with draymond green and even speaking about the nba as a whole we have to understand that with defense it's always a little bit hard to understand and quantify what it represents Many people look at it just as the basic of if you can make an offensive player's field goal percentage lower, then that's better. But in the bigger picture, there's things to steals, offensive rebounds, defensive presence, being a defensive anchor, being able to stop offenses from just getting through and, you know, feeding. There's a lot of stuff that goes into not just being a defender, but being someone who's an elite defender in the NBA. And when I think about some of the best and just some of the most talented of all time, whether it comes from having a strong center presence like Shaq, having a really crafty way of playing like Will Chamberlain, or even just being someone really scrappy and energetic like Dennis Rodman, I look at and I even kind of compare Draymond Green to them because in all eyes, at least in the modern day, he's to me an elite level defender in their same class. And it really makes me just think about where would they be without Draymond Green? Now it's easy to see when you say a Steph or a Clay, but when you really put into perspective like what Draymond brings, do you feel as if Draymond was not there, would they have as many rings? Now, many people just want to say yes, of course, this, that, the other, but really think about the last few championships we've had. I really want to put a lot of emphasis on the recent Nugget Championship, and I really want to talk about the defensive presence being the main reason that they won and almost glided through certain parts of the finals. So to give you some context with this, Aaron Gordon, to me, should have been second in voting to, the, to that finals MVP. Every single stop, every single defensive presence, a rebound, uh, just straight feeds, just straight feeds over and over and over, off the key, off the key perimeters, dimes, everything you needed from a scrappy defensive minded player at elite levels, at prime time finals championship caliber, that was Aaron Gordon. And when I think about Aaron Gordon in that way, it genuinely gives me flashbacks and mirrors of the first two championships of Golden State. When I think about that defensive anchor and presence, people don't understand to be an anchor doesn't just mean that people can't get past you. It means to facilitate and set up defense in a way that will always or more often than not lead to turnovers, mistakes, or just less efficient shooting. That's what anchor defense is. And to me, Draymond Green is a top three anchor defensive player of all time. I think that, and I, I say that with no exaggeration, anchor defense, again, that does not mean individual defense. You can name Shaq's, Chamberlain's, you can, you can name a lot of them, but I'm talking about what you bring to where you can set up an offense where if you potentially are affected, the defense still stays strong and keeps the entire system from falling in on itself. And I think Draymond's really good at that. I think another player to speak on with that is Drew Holiday as well, how he has a really good ability to reset the offense, a really, really good defensive ability to reset the offense. I remember it in their Bucks championship, and I remember it vividly in this recent Celtics championship, seeing how Drew would keep making crafty plays, crafty rebound, offensive rebounds, turn into quick little lays, seeing how OK missed, but the rebound went so straight toward a teammate because he had a good sense of the way the play was developing this type of stuff can't be quantifiable and it gets frustrating because people are seeing draymond's green's numbers slowly dwindle and the first thing i think about with that is that why are you focusing on him as a scorer why are we changing the narrative on who he is as a basketball player because now he's not fitting what we view as you know objectively right in the way he's behaving or acting why are we starting to pretend like we ever thought draymond was a first or second option in scoring if you really need it so you can drop 15 16 20 20 like it's not impossible but why are we pretending like we've ever viewed draymond as being an offensive leader that's not his position and that's not his role so why are we trying to compare 
Draymond's weaknesses to Clay's strengths and then pretend like that's just a, a oh he's better. Stop it, bro. Stop it. On my mama, we already know Draymond will lock up Clay. Stop it. Stop it, bro. Stop it. He might not put up the same points. He probably would never if they're a point by point exchange. That's not his role. That's not his role. It never was. So it just annoys me in the sense that we're trying to put this type of narrative on Draymond. We even talk about the Jordan Poole situation, which is so funny to me because of course Draymond's in the wrong for hitting that man. We're never gonna pretend like that's ever okay with the way to handle confrontation. But let's really get some context. That was not the first altercation Poole had with the team. There were multiple other veterans that even before that time were openly stating that they had issues with Poole, how he thought he was going to be the next Steph Curry, how he was trying to basically treat others and move a little bit different, which rubbed Curry the wrong way as well. We're not going to also pretend as if when this man Draymond didn't go out of his way for it to not be seen. Like we're not going to pretend like this video footio was just wanted out there either. This was something seen by someone who shouldn't even have been there and shouldn't even have captured it. So I'm not going to blame them for doing that, but I'm saying that we're seeing things from a very specific perspective and we have to also remember we don't see how things bottle up of course with that bigger step is that why wouldn't you get rid of pool over draymond this man's giving y'all three rings bro like like why are we starting to pretend like we're trying to rewrite history bro at that time four like of course we get that he could have been that next elite level scorer but let's keep it a buck he played boo boo in that finals disgusting terrible like really bad like like extremely bad bro like the, the like literally let's start pretending that year where he got traded he played terrible in the playoffs bro and no matter what nobody says bro this isn't a video game bro your regular numbers don't matter we're real this is real life bro if you're not putting up at a high level when you've been acting and talking all that talk and not walking it when you're having to be benched in the first few minutes because you're going so inefficient and giving so many turnovers like stop it bro Let's stop just putting it all on this man Draymond like this wasn't an inevitability or inevitability, inevitability, whatever, bro. We're not going to act like this wasn't going to happen regardless at some point. Point is, the main thing that I see Draymond affecting was really just showing that the fractures in the Golden State were deeper than they may have appeared. And I feel like he had to respond and give a response in some way regardless, but it just starts the seeds of seeing what everything was going on and then seeing the way clay has been acting and the way people were talking about it that type of presence isn't healthy either and that stuff doesn't help anything overall in the slightest but cloudy world and let me know what you think about draymond green am i protecting him or am i a draymond stan or do you all feel like it's a little bit too much draymond green hate i feel like he could never destroy the dynasty because he's never been needed to score he's been needed to facilitate play make and defend and in all three of those specific categories he has still been a high level production player you could say oh he's not as good as he was in whatever year you want to put but he's definitely still a net rating positive positive. and those efficient little numbers and plus minuses love that dude they love him so cloudy world and let me know what you all think like comment subscribe and we gone